Yo, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> hey, yo. So, <laughs> what's up, man? Is this what we're doing again? I'm, I'm laughing because I know exactly why Max is laughing right now. But how we both end up for not having our equipment tonight, man? No, bro. My equipment is not working. All right. So, my equipment is not working. So, uh, that's my dilemma. Basically, the, the high tech webcam is not picking up, and the um, the uh, the twelve hundred dollar joint ain't picking up either. So I'm just screwed tonight. Either one of your operations is working right now. <laughs> nah, we we just gonna work through it, man. It's triple threat wholesale, and we just gonna we gonna make it work. So so check this out. So um, obviously you guys know the, the build for my house is starting to move along, and um, in in February, prior to me knowing that I had to go out and get, uh, do all this erosion control, I thought I was gonna be pretty fast to move along. I end up uh, getting my 84 lumber, quote. So the lumber to build my house was about 20, yes, this is live, Marco. So the, the number the, the, the number to build my house was uh, to get the wood for it was 25,000, right? So I don't know if y'all know that number lumber has went up 80% in the, since February. Yeah. My new my new check I just dropped for lumber yesterday was 43,000 compared to 25 grand and and I should have bought that and stored it. Yeah. Um, now, what, I, what I told you in, in 2018. Uh, what you say? What you say? What I told you in 2018, man. Stop doing yeah. what? Get out of new construction. Well, now, let me Max, tell you what I did. Max is he building his personal house. Yeah, this but, this yeah, this is just a whatever I gotta do house. But, but the investment check this right out. Now, new can it, man. So what I did is I went out and I bought futures on wood. So I went and hedge my loss for paying an extra twenty thousand. That I that wood is going up eight to ten percent a week. So I went out and bought futures. And I went out and bought um, some stock in some of the largest, largest, uh, in the largest actually wood companies. Yeah, didn't they so, say, because uh, most of the wood comes from China? No, bro, it's not even that. So there's a wood, there's a wood place in Canada that's shut down right now, that's uh-huh. slowed down big time. But then you got, I think it's all bull crap if you ask me. I think it's all BS about the prices of wood going up because they said the reason why wood's gone up because of the shortage of workers they have right now. Yes. But I'm talking, but they all got PPP, bro. Yeah, that and people need jobs too. And and then and then they, and then the wood guys, the guys that actually go in the forest and cut down the woods and sell wood to wood mills, said they they've been telling them not to bring them no more wood. So it, who who can't fake? A, a crisis to make 80 percent more on a on a product they probably make it more that way than spending more to hire more people and mill more lumber and guess what we got to do when we in the middle of think about think about cj if you would have sold I, I don't i know a guy that said he sold four he sold four was selling four of his properties and had to literally cancel the contracts on them mm. yeah i don't miss that at all especially right now so lumber prices are absolutely crazy right now. Yeah. Okay. So also, um, you might want to order your appliances 30 days prior because you got some lows out here quoting people two months. I had to wait 30 days to get my refrigerator in this house. I'm not buying my stuff from Um, um, I'm, The reason being, a lot of appliances are made in China. So things are taking longer, of course. Way longer, bro. It's crazy. Yeah, no, yeah, I know. So, and right now, if you are a retail buyer looking at a hundred and twenty thousand dollar house, it's a possibility you might get an upgraded appliance packages just because a five thousand dollar appliance package just because that's all they had in the store left, and that person had to put it together to get to show the house. So that's going on right now. But Lowe's, like my um, fellow investor friends locally, told me Lowe's is telling them uh, two months. They two months out. So you get yours in, um, order your appliance now, which is uh, September, you'll get them November. I think I think something important about <clears throat> this conversation too is, this is an example of what makes it so tough to do 
affordable products and, and things of that nature in the marketplace in terms of housing because you know land costs haven't dropped yet those have st- those have kind of stabilized out and they've kind of you know have crept up over the last couple of years mm-hmm. you know material costs are going up you know things of that nature so as a builder right you know you put yourself in a position where you may want to do you know affordable rate housing things of that nature but all the other variables involved is literally just impossible to be able to do something like that so when people see a lot of new construction going on in fill lots inside of you know existing city city neighborhoods things of that nature where that's coming from is you literally can't afford to build something affordable but hey, let's talk about something that i seen on the news two days ago or yesterday sorry yesterday open doors going public uh, i haven't seen that really and uh shamat which is a guy that owns the capital but they're doing it through they're, they're, they're doing something that, yeah they're going public and they're doing it through something now here's where i still think that open door is a bad thing to get into uh as an investor first of all i would not buy their stock on ipo number one they haven't even made any money yet they haven't made no money yet and the one thing that they're missing so shamat i don't know if you guys know shamat shamat's a real smart guy but i think this is one of the dumbest investments he ever did so what they how they they brought it to market was with a, what they call a SPAC. You guys know what a SPAC is? No. S P A C uh, in investment. So it's like uh, it's a special purpose acquisition company. Um, I mean, a special purpose acquisition company, sometimes called a blank check company, is a shell company that has no operations but plans to go public with the intention of carrying or merging with the company until. Uh, the, the, the public offering. So essentially, they uh, the SPAC that Shamat is a part of got a $90 million fee, right? Then he says he invested $160 million of their own money into it. So literally like a $60, $60 million investment. Um, oh man, that's a better camera. That's it was you. I it was you the whole time. It's got, nah, I got it working. I got it started working for me. Nah, bro, that was you the whole time. It don't just, quit, stuff just don't start doing that. Yo, it, it, yeah, I got to work it again. All right, my camera clean again, y'all. He's going to so, leave me out like that. So, 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 <laughs> so what happens is they're, they're going public, right? Either way, they're going public. I, I think there's a couple things wrong with that. I even did a video. I went to an open door product. One, they don't know anything about the community that they work in typically. They only know it from an algorithm standpoint. Two, um, their, their, their finished product is crap yeah and three they never made any money yet so he's 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 like uh he's like yo this is this is uh one of the best investments we've made in a long time and i'm like he's like he's like this is one of the the markets that are going to change just like how buying cars and all this stuff online and all that stuff and i'm like yeah but you're missing this big human element because if this was the case then then real estate agents would have been gone a long time ago before this transition not not just that but like one thing that makes me think about is like how many i don't even know i don't think you can right but do we do you guys know anybody that's doing 50 100 plus rehabs a year successfully without you know issues or anything like that i mean i don't know anybody right now doing that many um i don't know if you guys do this guy says shamat knows what he's doing what he's doing but i don't think he he, only to fool the public. I mean, he's got a he's got a real low risk involved with what he's doing. I I think I think Shamat hasn't done enough research to make yeah, a decision on this. I don't I don't see Open Door personally as a viable business. Um, I just don't see how you can at scale. Uh, like the logistics, they, their margins. Let me back up. Their margins per door aren't high enough to support the logistics needed to do something with like that. Like the manpower needed for that but these guys got a lot more money than i got uh they got fancier degrees than i got uh, but what they don't have is the the experience of actually doing this stuff before um so like you said they're making decisions based on algorithms which work for a lot of different things you know they work in real estate to an extent uh but something like rehabbing man that's labor intensive uh site intensive um i don't know like the disruption in your margin for something like having to wait two months for appliances or, or lumber going up 80 percent things of those natures like i don't see how in the in the margin that i've read before that they're working on 
um, how, like how that's sustainable. I mean, I agree with you, Chris. Um, you know, Open Door bought my house. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you did say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they bought, they bought my house, man. So. Uh, and they were the highest bidders for your house, right? The highest bidders. So what? So what are you guys' thoughts on how that could potentially impact? Because we got, you know, we're all wholesalers. We got a lot of people watching this who are wholesalers. What are you guys' thoughts on how that can, in a positive or negative way, impact what we're doing? Um, I think if you, I, and, and this has been a question before, right? You know, this whole eye buyer thing has came up before, and these questions Most about yes. they're going to kill us. The reality is they can't, they can't work with us. They can't work. They can't do what we do. They can't do what we do. Yeah. Period. I, I, I agree with that. I think my thought is. I think the majority of the public, when it comes to housing and things of that nature, is, is, and I'm speaking with a wholesaler hat on, I don't think that they want to deal with these huge, large companies. Uh, a lot of people, in my personal experience as a wholesaler, they're not looking to deal with somebody who's this big, huge company because they often think they're going to be taken advantage of. And when we're, when we're when you're operating from like a direct-to-seller standpoint, uh, there's no trust barrier there, right? Like there's no realtor involved there's no attorney involved it's not of your choosing kind of thing typically so the there has to be trust and credibility built directly in with the seller and i can see i see the majority of people wanting to work with people like us versus working with large-scale companies that that there may be a level of distrust there whether that's right or wrong uh with working with a company as big as open door or something like that so so open door and zillow only profited three percent per per an actual flip now that the company's not profitable but their flips only profit 3.3 percent and like yeah how can you like how can you logistically work off of that type of margin even once you compound it right like i just don't see how that's going to be i just don't see it scalable yeah jim is saying that shamat sorry sorry Nas. jim is saying that not that that shamat is that they said the same thing about carvana the difference between Carvana is that you and I will buy a car on eBay right now. Right. Right. We'll, we'll buy a car on eBay. That So Carvana is not a new phenomenon. It's not, you don't have to, you don't have to train people to buy cars online. Right. That you didn't have to train. That was already done over a long period of time, training people to be able to, I mean, you look at CarMax, most people bought their cars online, went in, went in the store and seen them, you know? So it's, it's not a, it's not a new, it's not a new thing. You got, you got Tesla. People are buying Teslas, and then you got dealerships where they where they're at. So that's not. I don't put the car bottom in the same same category. Um, the thing about you know selling your house is, and 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 not only in perspective of of the customer learning what it's like to sell your house online. Also, can you do it successfully? Is the more important thing. Can, how how do you make these evaluations without having thousands of foot soldiers on on the floor on the ground? Right, which then eats up your margin. Yeah, a, algor a algorithm can't a algorithm can't tell you whether the, the the there's a leak in the roof or not. Now I know they do pre inspection buys. <clears throat> like I know that I know they do a pre inspection before they buy it, but that usually takes them to bring the price down. It's a turn off on a customer. Think about how many times we've went into a house. Or we said something, hey, we can buy it over the phone, and then we go into the house, then we have to mark it down based upon blah 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 blah. It's a turnoff. They're gonna make another phone call. Absolutely. So when they bought my house, they um due to the COVID, they didn't send anybody out. Nobody looked at the house at all. On the outside only. Did the outside walk through, um, not the inside. Inside we did FaceTime. So quick question on that then. You said they were the, your highest bidder. Yeah. So I don't know if you mind sharing, but or let me ask it this way. What was the difference between their highest bid and the next lowest bid? It's public. It's public information. He told us what they bought it for last time. Oh, okay. I didn't know if he wanted people to know where he was at or anything like that. But yeah, this is the old house. They could they could Google. They could, that's the old that's the old, <laughs> the old spot. <laughs> yeah. So um Zillow offered me 140. Okay. They offered me 150. I talked to my realtor. <clears throat> 150 for my ranch style house was the highest sale on my street for as is so i'm like all right well cool um easy as is um i don't have to fix nothing up i don't have to do granite countertops yo my realtor said yeah i mean you, you might as well take that so i took that that 150 
And it was now I'm saying 150 net to me. What that means 150 net to me is that they offer 163, but after their fees, I got 150. So so that's important to say. So when you look at an open door purchase online, you like in North Carolina where disclosure state, you're gonna see that they paid 163, right? Yeah, you right. don't see yeah. the fees. But, but then they reduced you down to 150 after these fees. Correct. Right? Some people, that's a turnoff. Yes, some people don't like it. For me, I would say, man, I'm listed for 150. So therefore, 6% off 150, and I'm getting 150. I'm like, man, yo, let's do it. So what, what did they end up selling your house for when it was all done? Bruh, they ended up selling it for 183. And what time frame? Uh, less than 30 days. Um, CJ, you've been to my house. Max never been to that house. And I'm a pretty clean, pretty clean person. You cut my house, you take your shoes off at the door. So therefore- You told me, you told me to take my shoes off when I walked in the, in the house. Absolutely, yes. And then I sent you to your room like my son. <laughs> God. They cleaned the carpet, did the touch up paint. I was thinking like, yo, I got to do granite countertops to all the bathrooms. Nobody's buying these plain Jane white countertops that I had. Um, as you've seen, CJ, I'm like nobody buying that. So I'm going to do the granite countertops. I would have spent about five grand and fix that, right? Could have done it. Man, they refinished those white countertops. So got rid of all the scratches and all that. Refinished that touch up paint, cleaned the, cleaned the carpet and sold it for 183. Shit. That's called a hotel. Yeah. Huh. I didn't, but they made their own comp. I'm at a thousand. Okay. They knew something that my real that i wasn't able to bet on i wasn't wait, 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 no. so when you sold to them originally that was the highest sell at that time 150 for my style of house so now, then they they bet on creating their own next comp i swear they, they created their own next comp a 1300 square foot house two levels sold for uh one of the market for 180 sold for 185 so I was at 1,050 square feet, right? So we like, I right, well, fixed up. You probably can get like 160 fixed up. So I'm like, man, I'm not going to spend 5,000 to make another, you know, five. And it's going to get eat up, eight up in commissions and all that. I said, yo, I'd rather just list it 150 as is. So- Where you getting uh, information from, bro? Huh? Where was you getting your information from? The realtor. We, we, had, we had a conversation. You got to pull, you know, you got to get your own info, man. Come I mean, I put, I put my own info, but I didn't want, I was like, yo, I got a cash buyer in front of me that's ready to go, can close as soon as I need him to close, say, hey, look, we going hard at the X day, or do I want to deal with a loan in COVID? Now, loans are taking- What month was this? July. So we July. were kind of end the COVID already. Yeah, yeah, he said that Nas got scared, bro. Nah. That's, probably, that's what I was trying to. That's what I, I was got to scared. No, no, no. We were at the. We were not on lockdown. But have you tried to get a home loan now? Because I'm refinancing, bro. They, are, bro, they fisting you right now for documentation, making sure that you can, you know, what I'm saying, afford that house. Um, in the in the event of this COVID, so loans are. I, I, a realtor told me loans are taking between 45 and 60 days, sometimes three months. So I was like, man, let me take this shirt shot belt and get it get it off. Cause I was gonna list it 150 as is. But they offered me 150 and they turned around, just did the touch up paint, clean the carpet, 185. So kudos to them. So you got scared. I got yeah, yeah. I took the safe route. I I I I went to safe route. But there's a lesson in that too, though, right? Yeah, there's a lesson in that. Like I, there's nothing I, wrong with taking I'm the safe route. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Hey bro, my cost base is on that house was no no my cost base was like 86. so you yeah you was eating on it yeah i didn't bro like well, yeah you could have ate 100 though could have <laughs> now as you put it that way could have they say you don't need money to start wholesaling but you but don't you need money for the earnest deposit earnest money deposit max what do you think absolutely not i'm about, I'm about to show i'm about to try i'm looking for my first contract right here just so y'all can see it. But go ahead. Nah, what y'all think? Nah, is what you got on that? Um, I'm gonna say nah. I mean, um, 
the way I started out, I started uh, out putting a dollar on the, as the earnings money deposit and didn't give it to him. Yeah, my first, my first, I don't know how many deals, my first probably 20 deals, my EMD was 10 bucks. Yeah, but did you give him the 10 bucks? Nah. Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't give it to him. No. Like, yeah, so don't, I, don't, don't go saying, hey, the guys on Triple Threat said, yeah, don't say that. You give an EMD. That's not what we're saying. That's not what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. We're, that's not what we're saying. To have but, a valid contract, you do have to have a consideration. So if you don't give them that dollar or ten dollars, that that contract holds no merit in court. Yeah, but I think the point is, like my first twenty or so deals, my EMD was ten dollars, right? And at the end of the day, at that point in time, I was significantly broke. But I could find ten dollars to place an EMD. I mean, look, if I've got the prospect of making ten thousand dollars, and I just got to find ten, I could like I can find ten dollars, right? Like, like literally, probably in the couch. Yeah, I can find ten bucks. So I think sometimes people overthink the EMD portion uh, of what we're doing. There's no specific number that an EMD has to be, right? Correct. It's whatever you negotiate, whatever the seller is willing to accept. Uh, it has to be a dollar or more, essentially. So, like right now, as a standard, all of my contracts reflect a hundred dollar EMD. Sometimes sellers ask for more than that. I'd say ninety nine percent of sellers never question that whatsoever. No, they just want they just want to know, hey, when you close them. When yeah, you, you got to speak to sellers with confidence and explain your process and let them know, um, because because the EMD is a seller's way of knowing that you're serious, an educated seller, right? right. And so you got to be able to confidently explain your process and what your intent is and build that trust. And that's why rapport is so critical in, in your sales process um, to navigate through uh, some of those EMD situations. Somebody who asked about contract, right? Yes. Yeah. This yeah. is my first contract ever. $50. $50. I ain't even used that attorney. That's all the way in Charlotte. Yo, if you look hard enough, you can probably see some misspellings. Hey yo, you know why? Um, though, but hey, 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 Max, you want to know why you're successful? Why CJ successful? What's that? Because you didn't look for a profession. You, you profession, just, went. you just did it. That was gonna be my question. I'm glad now I said that. I've got, I've got a ton of students, man. I, I see this question all the time. I know you guys see this question all the time. Max, where did you get this contract? And did you have an attorney look at the contract before you first used it? Da 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 da. Come on, man. You know I, I, already, have... know, I already know the answer. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's important for people that are new to here because I get this question all the time from my students. They're like, man, do I need to meet with an attorney? Do I need to have somebody look at the I'm like, listen, man, my first, very first real estate contract for my first few deals, I found from a random Google search. Finally found one that wasn't in PDF format because back then I didn't even know you could fill in a PDF. <laughs> Finally found word in one, one in word format, filled that thing out, man, and got paid, man. I couldn't have told you anything about the specific language of the contract. So Nas's point is sometimes in this business, we overthink it so much and we're trying to analyze every single step and every single thing. So you got to just go. No, And it's just, it's, what happens is, like I said, if you look through this contract, I promise you, there's, the people have told me there's misspellings in there somewhere. I just haven't found it. Um, I haven't looked that hard enough because I didn't care. What this was for me was around fourteen thousand um, dollars. So I don't care what the spelling was like. Yeah, and, man. Um, I'm trying to show y'all a assignment fee for this one. So yeah, so for the assignment contract we got yeah. one. So and, and said, uh, look right here. This is when nine. 928-2016. First deal. I'm coming up on my 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 four year anniversary. That's awesome, man. That's beautiful. That's awesome. So somebody, somebody says, uh no, go ahead, Max. My bad. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'm buying time. All right. So somebody well, I'm reading some of the questions. Somebody asked if I was a uh, a teacher before real estate. Uh I was not. Um maybe I could have been. You were uh, a stripper, weren't you? Oh, that was nice. That was nice. That was nice. That was nice. definitely nice. That was definitely nice. That was definitely nice. Um, no, nah, I was. Uh, I did Bible school um, before uh, before real estate. But no, in all, in all seriousness, though. I'm gonna say you did what? Nah, nah, nah. But no, I'm not a teacher. I just I I explained things the way that I needed to know it to understand it. And so, 
I try to break things things down in a very simple, easy to understand way. Hopefully, uh, right there. that's how I needed people to explain it to me. Um, right there. Where you at? Oh, 14,000. So you made 14 and put up 50. What day did he sign that? Put up the 50. What, day, what day did he sign that? 10 3. So what? That's four days later, five days later. How'd you find that buyer? Facebook Marketplace. So my contracts now have two things on it. They have um and and they have an earnest money deposit and a due diligence fee. Each one is a hundred dollars. So I'm pulling up two hundred dollars per per house. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. how, how do you guys work it? My EMD goes to the attorney who's in my office, and then the uh the actual the due diligence the due, due, due diligence fee which is hundred dollars buys me 10 days of whatever right so let me try to pull up a contract here you guys, I, I like how, how does your stuff work so i just do uh straight inspection periods but this my inspection periods run the duration of the contract right so i don't put a, a limitation on how long that inspection period is i do like uh because you mentioned that before i think on one of the triple threat episodes uh that due diligence piece uh, I like that a lot. My students, man, they recently put me up on something I haven't seen. Uh, I'll tell you guys about. They were talking, uh, they showed me this contract where they have it dated, and I don't know if this would hold up, but it's dated as business days versus a standard 30 days. So they dated as 30 business days. Uh, so if they need additional time, that it has a built-in additional time. I'm kind of the opposite. My contracts personally say within whatever our agreed time frame is to close, because I want to have the ability if I find a buyer fast and they can close ASAP, I want to be able to get that deal closed as, as quickly as possible. It's cool, man. Everything works out for a reason. We we all flourish now. We all doing what we doing, man. And at the end of the day, everybody that you see me rock with, I I, I, I put them through this test where I feel like they're genuine. I love the polites. I love the, uh, the Campbells. Antoine and his wife, his whole, his two kids. I love all them. Like, like Brian, that's my homie. Byron, all them cats y'all ever see me with. Like, I got respect for those cats. Like, at the end of the day, like we all trying to accomplish the same thing. We trying to change our family tree, right? And we trying to share the wealth of knowledge that we've had given to us to be able to give you some of that back. There's nothing, and and listen, there's nothing wrong with making money and showing y'all how to make money. Just make sure you learn it from the people who's actually learning. Like yeah. may maybe one day I'll package it up and I'll put out a course because I think a lot of people are asking how, when you gonna package it together so I don't gotta go through 300 videos and put it together, right? So you gotta understand, man, like at the end of the day, I'm okay, I'm blessed. Every day I wake up happy um, that yeah. I can do what I love and help people do what they love and get paid a lot of money. And I'm sure all these guys are saying the same. 100%, man. Want to, want, to see, want to see the real estate community win. Want to see people get their fair opportunity uh, to get the life they deserve, man. I, I know we're all all passionate about that. I know everybody that you're connected with is extremely passionate about that. Um, yo, shout out to Elvin Green. Uh, he said, "Can't you can't forget Francis. Yo, shout out to my man Francis, by the way. Hey, yo, uh, here's, the, here's the crazy thing about Francis, bro. And I, I need to cut you off. A lot of people think Francis and I are business partners. A lot of people think Francis is, is, is like on my payroll. The thing is, me and Fr Francis is my number one ace when it comes to this business. Um, and I've never like had to payroll him. He's always done deals enough to make his own money. I remember when I met him, he was in a position where he was doing he was doing okay, but now he he buys like the last invest like the last contract we just showed you. He bought that. Like he went out and bought that with his own cash. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I knew Francis was a real player, man. First time I meet him, we in the studio. He comes in. He's like, hey, man, how you doing? How you doing? He's like, man, I heard about you. You know, boom, boom. First thing he does is start talking about deals. I said, man, I love this guy. I don't even know him yet. I said, I love this guy. Because he, because he, because when you're fully immersed in the business like that and what you're trying to accomplish, you can't be stopped. 100%. Yo, Yo, check this out. So he, this this guy right here did give me twenty dollars. He wanted me, wanted me to help mentor him. I don't have the time to really mentor, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pay CJ full price for his mentorship, and I want you to go, go join Charged Up, and I'm gonna pay for it. And if you tell me you don't, you're not attending classes and you're not doing what you're supposed to do, 
I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw rocks at your head, right? So <laughs> send me the invoice or whatever I gotta do. I cash up you, whatever it is. I we'll pay get it, for it. We'll get, we'll get it worked out. Look, send me a DM on IG at the Chris Jefferson. Please give me a couple of days to hit you back. Yeah. All right, I'm saying I'm gonna hit you back as soon as you send the message. Give me a few days. I'll respond to it. Um, I respect people like this. All right. Um, he said that was my last twenty dollars. I hope you reach out. I feel that it's genuine just reading it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I tell people all the time, I tell my students the same thing. It's something different about hitting rock bottom moments, man. When you when you touch and feel rock bottom and, and you know what that feels like intimately, it, it, it does something to you that it, it changes your, your mental fortitude. And as you start to move forward in life, as things start to rebound for you, not, nothing can hurt you. Like nothing can damage you because you've already felt that pain before. And, and my my guy Coach Lynch says when they buried me when you hit rock bottom, mm. you know I was a seed. Yeah. yeah, so I'm growing from there. So he got Drake, so Dre, Dre M James. Make sure you hit up my man CJ in his uh, DM. I'm gonna pay for your full year. Of, you better do the work too. This ain't no get rich cake screen. You better go out and do the work. I'm gonna pay for it. Do the work. You gotta go. Yeah, you gotta go. And I'm gonna call. I'm gonna come back on here and call you out. No question. Yeah, come join the you, Nate P said. So, yo, check this out, man. It's, it's 932. You know yeah, what I mean? Out, man. I gotta, yeah, I yeah, gotta yeah. go work out. I gotta, I gotta go eat, dog. So, anyway, I gotta go work out. Look, Private chef. You know, real talk, highlight me at Real Estate Guru. Um, Look at all this water I gotta drink before I go to sleep. Oh, wow. You I kill, I kill, I kill, I kill all of this. I kill most of this tonight, right before, right during my workout. Nas, nice. we gotta get on it. We gotta get serious, man. Oh, I'm down 15 pounds, fellas. I don't know what y'all doing. Nah, I'm, I'm good. Like people, like yo, bro, you working out? That bike doing me right. So you didn't see what you was just shaking. You're not good yet, bro. I'm not good yet either. I still got, <laughs> I still got some stuff down here to shake. I definitely do. Yeah, we got to get rid of this, man. Man, look, yeah. I appreciate you guys as usual, man. Any last words? Yo, if you um tech savvy, if you are tech savvy, media savvy, and you in Charlotte, DM me on IG. I like that, man. I'm gonna say the same thing about Richmond, Virginia. If you got information you need about coaching, mentorship, whatever the case might be, DM me on IG. I will get back to you within a few days. Don't beat me up if I don't respond right away, please. Uh, much love to you guys for tuning in, getting some game, watching us have a conversation. Uh, peace, man. Much love.